Good day, learners. Today, we're going to talk about another type of combinatorics. We call this one as combination. So, ano bang kaibahan ng combination sa permutation? So, we're going to discuss it. So, let us say we have this example. Under permutation, the group has to select a president and a secretary from five members in the group. How many possible arrangement of officers are possible? Let us say yung members ng group ay sina Jesse, Russell, Kevin, JC, and Nilo. Let's have example naman sa combination. The group has to select two officers from five members in the group. How many possible arrangements of officers are possible? So, we have the members, Jesse, Russell, Kevin, JC, and Nilo. So, based sa dalawang example natin, ma-identify natin kung ano yung kaibahan ng permutation sa combination. Okay, let's focus ourselves with permutation. So, ito na yung given na situation natin. So, we're going to select out of five people, we're going to select two members, isang president at isang secretary. Our possible choice could be Jesse and Russell. Ibig sabihin nito, si Jesse yung magiging president, si Russell naman yung magiging secretary. Now, it would be different if uunahin natin isusulat si Russell kaysa kay Jesse. So, kung first na naisulat si Russell, therefore, siya yung president and si Jesse naman yung magiging secretary. We can also have Jesse and Kevin. So, this is one possible arrangement. And that would be different pag si Kevin ang president at si Jesse naman yung secretary. You can also have Jesse and JC. And iba siya pag si JC naman yung president and Jesse yung secretary. So we can have or we can write the following arrangements. Now as you can see, same yung person na na-consider natin. Let us say we have Kevin and JC. Pero, they will not be counted as one kung yung arrangement natin ay just JC and Kevin. Kasi nga, iba yung arrangement nila. So in this case, yung permutation natin would be equal to 20. So, we have 20 possible arrangements kung bibilangin natin sila. And by using our formula of the permutation of N objects taken R at a time, we have 5P. 2, that would be equal to 20 ways. Now, ano yung kaibahan niya sa combination? So, based sa example natin, we can say that the order and arrangement is important under permutation. Kasi nga, kung si Jesse and Nilo yung magka-partner or magiging president and secretary, iba naman yung pagkakabilang natin kung si Nilo yung president at Si Jesse naman yung secretary. That is why under permutation, the order and arrangement is very important. Now, how about sa combination? The group has to select two officers. So, ang nakalagay lang dito is two officers. Hindi nakaspecify kung president ba or secretary. As long as pipili lang tayo ng dalawang officers out of five members. So, same pa rin yung first persons na involved. So, let us say we're going to select Jesse and Russell. Now, would it be different kung Russell and Jesse yung pagkakapili natin? Okay, it will not be different. Therefore, this is the same. This will be counted as 1. So, kanina sa, com sa permutation, they are not counted as 1 kasi nga yung arrangement or order is very important. However, pagdating natin sa combination, they will be counted as 1. Jesse and Russell is the same as Russell and Jesse. Same goes with the different combinations that we had. So, they will be counted as 1. So, in this case, we have how many ways? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Therefore, the possible combinations that we can form out of five persons getting or selecting two persons at a time, we have 10 ways.
So, ito na yung kaibahan ni combination kay permutation. Order and arrangement is not important under combination. So, by definitions, the subsets of R objects selected from N different objects, R is less than or equal to N, are called combinations. The order of objects is not considered under combinations. And yung formula na gagamitin natin sa pag-solve ng problems involving combinations, we have N C R or N taken R at a time is equal to N factorial all over the quantity of N minus R quantity factorial R factorial. Now let us determine whether each situation involves permutation or combination before tayo mag-solve ng mga problems involving combination. First situation, five badminton players chosen from a group of nine people. So this is an example of a combination. So pipili lang tayo ng limang tao out of nine. So walang position or arrangement yung mga badminton players na pipiliin natin. Therefore, yung arrangement niya is not important. So since yung arrangement is not important, then that would signify combination. Next, 7 toppings for a pizza. So, kahit unahin pa natin ilagay yung cheese before yung bacon or kahit ano pa yung mga toppings, same pa rin yung magiging lasa ng pizza or same pa rin yung magiging insura niya. So, we can say that the arrangement is not important or the order is not important. That is why it is a combination. How about a classroom seating arrangement? So, yung word pa lang yan na arrangement. So, iba yung arrangement pag si Pedro yung nasa first chair or siya yung nasa pangalawa or nasa pangatlo. So, this example or situation is permutation. Next, choose, choosing a president, vice president, and secretary. So, since may position, iba yung position ng president, ni vice, at saka ni secretary, therefore, meron tayong order dito. And since order matters in this situation, then this is an example of permutation. Next, a six-person committee from a class. So, pipili lang tayo ng six na tao out of a math class. So, the order does not matter. So, this is a combination. Assigning a six-digit PIN code. So, if you're going to try... Uh, to press yung six-digit PIN code, of course, the arrangement or the order of the digits matter. That is why this is an example of a permutation. Next, writing the subset of a given set. So, if you can remember sa grade 7 na lesson natin, if or the order of the subsets of a given set is immaterial or does not matter. Let us say yung uh, elements ng set natin ay AB. So, kung AB yung pagkakasulat, wala siyang difference pag BA naman yung pagkakasulat natin. Therefore, this is combination. Now, let's have some problems. For a survey, 5 students are chosen from a group of 10 students. And how many ways can this be done? So, this is a combination problem. So, all we need to do is identify kung ano yung N natin. Yung N natin is yung total number of students. And ilang naman yung students na pipiliin natin at a time. So, we have R is equal to 5. So, we simply substitute that one sa given combination formula natin. So, simplify lang natin yung sa denominator. 10 minus 5, it will become 5 factorial. You can use your calculator in solving this one. Or pwede rin siyang mano-mano. So, we have 10 factorial sa taas. Then, sa baba naman, sa denominator, we have 5 factorial times another 5 factorial. I-cancel natin yung common na 5 factorial. So, yung matitira na lang would be 10. So, ito lang yung matitira kasi we're going to cancel. Uh, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Dito din sa baba, we're going to cancel 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1 since they are common factor. So, yung matitira na lang sa taas would be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6. Then, sa denominator naman, we have 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 
Okay, if we're going to simplify it, our answer becomes 302,400 divided by 120. Okay, so the final answer would be 2,520 ways. Okay, next. Now, let's have another example. The art club has 20 members. How many ways can 6 officers be selected? So, again, kailangan nating determine muna yung value ng N at saka ng R natin. So, we have 20 persons involved. So, N would be 20. We are going to select 6 members at a time or 6 officers. So, the R or the value of R is equal to 6. Using yung formula natin, is substitute natin yung value ng 20 or ng value ng N at saka ng R. Then, simplify lang natin. And finally, we are going to have our final answer which is equal to 38,760 ways. Again, you can use your scientific calculator in solving this problem. Next question. 13 students are playing for 3 scholarship slots. How many different ways can the scholarships be awarded? Again, yung value ng N natin is 13 because we have 13 students na involved. Then 3 lang yung makakatanggap sila ng scholarship. So R would be equal to 3. Using the same formula, we're going to substitute the value of N and R. Then, simplify lang natin. And we will get our final answer which is equal to 286 ways. Let's now have another problem. In how many ways can a team consisting of two boys and three girls be formed if, they are, if there are six boys and ten girls who qualified to be in a team? So kung i-analyze natin yung problem, we have two combinations na kailangan natin kunin. Una, kukuha tayo ng uh, two boys out of six boys. And we are going to select also three girls out of ten girls. Therefore, sa boys, we have n is equal to six. Yung value naman ng r is equal to two. And pagdating sa girls, we have n is equal to ten. At yung r naman niya would be equal to three. So, this is one combination and another combination. Kasi nga, bubuo tayo ng grupo na dapat merong dalawang boys at merong tatlong girls. So, to do that, same pa rin yung formula na gagamitin natin. But then again, since dalawa yung combination na gagamitin natin, then we are going to multiply the two combinations. So, yung first would be 6 taken 2. Ito yung sa boys na combination times 10 taken 3. Ito naman yung sa girls. Okay, we're going to multiply them following yung fundamental principle of counting. So, yung first event is to select 2 boys out of 6 times the second event which is to select 3 girls out of 10 girls. So, simplify lang natin. Then, we're going to substitute yung mga n at yung values ng r natin. So, we have 2 again. After that one, simplify lang natin. Dito sa first, the combination natin, we are have 6 factorial all over 4 factorial times 2 factorial times 10 factorial. 7 minus 3, it becomes 7 factorial. Then, bring down 3 factorial. Then, simplify natin yung dalawang combination. We will have 15 times 120. And the final product would be 1,800 ways. And for our next example, a bag has 6 red balls and 4 blue balls. 5 balls are selected. And how many ways can the 5 balls be drawn from the total of 10 balls if at least 3 balls are red? Okay. So dito, ito yung mga kailangan natin tandaan. Out of those balls, kailangan natin ng limang ball. Okay, limang balls yung pipiliin. Pero, nakasaad din dito na dapat at least three balls are red. Okay, naka-emphasize itong word na at least three balls are 
bed. So how are we going to do this? Again, we have two colors ng balls. We have red and blue. So sa red, we have 6. And sa blue naman, we have 4. Same pa rin yung gagamitin natin na formula. Okay? So the first one, kasi sabi niya dito, at least 3 balls are red. So out of 6 red balls, pipili tayo ng tatlo. That is why yung first combination natin is 6 taken 3. Right? Okay. Kung 3 na yung napili natin sa red, ibig sabihin dalawa na lang yung kukunin natin sa blue. Bakit dalawa na lang? Kasi ang total should be equal to 5 balls. Okay. So, 4. Itong 4 is the total number of blue balls. So, 4 taken 2. Tama? Okay. So, pag sinabi natin at least 3, Ibig sabihin nito is yung number from 3 and yung mga numbers na mas mataas pa sa kanya. So, since 5 balls yung limit natin, therefore, we're going to start with 3 red balls. After that one, we're going to have 4 red balls. And the last one would be 5 red balls. Okay. So, this would be one possible combination. Or, another combination would be this one. So, since or yung gagamitin natin, then we're going to add the combinations. Kaya plus sign yung nilagay natin dito na operation. Okay. Kanina, what if 3 yung red balls? This time, what if 4 red balls naman? So, that would be 6 taken 4. Kung 4 yung red na mapipili, therefore, isang bola na lang out of 4 blue balls ang pwede nating maselect. Okay? Para maging equal sila sa 5. Then, plus. And the last combination would be, what if yung red balls naman would be equal to exactly 5? So, that would be 6 taken 5. Kung 5 red balls na yung mapipili natin, obviously, wala na tayong makukuha sa blue. Kasi nga na, kuha na natin yung maximum total number of balls which is 5. Okay. Then, we're going to solve lang yung bawat combination. So, in this one, we have 20 times 6. Dito naman sa next, we have 15 times 4. And sa last one, we have 6 times 1. So, 20 times 6 is equal to 120. 15 times 4 is equal to 6, 60. 6 times 1 is equal to 6. And we simply add them. Therefore, our answer is 186 now it's your turn. Try to answer the following questions. And that's a wrap. Please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel, Sir Nino. And you can also post your math problems in the comment section. And we will do our very best to provide solution to your questions. Because remember, every problem has a solution. At kung math ang problema ninyo, ako ang kagapay ninyo, ako ang Sir Nino.